Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for getting everybody here safe this morning. You're an amazing God. You're a loving God. You're a holy God. Uh, you're a God that has sent forth His Spirit. And Lord, we just thank you for uh, the uh, Spirit or the presence of your Spirit this morning. Uh, Lord, I just would pray that you would begin to, that you would prepare us to be a sanctuary for you to, to dwell in and to live in and to guide us from and to speak to us from. Lord, as we look into your word, um, we just ask that you would open our minds to it and that you would help us to, uh, to accept it and uh, that you would continue to provide it growth as it is water. In Christ's name I pray, amen. All right, so any, who in here believes that you were created? Oh, church, there's like two people that believe they're created. We sh- I really need to start this further back than I thought. <laughs> who believes that you should not participate in church by hand raising? <laughs> Nobody. Okay, we have this serious dilemma here. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, so we have Patrick Mead coming in two weeks. So um, just as I was praying and trying to decide what to do to get ready to speak before Patrick Mead comes because you don't want to speak after Patrick Mead comes, if that makes any kind of sense. So I'm going to ride this thunder while it's still here. Um, I, speaking of that, if, did anybody see the skit um, online about the guy who had to speak after Martin Luther King? Has anybody seen that yet on YouTube? Haley's seen it. You've, you've got to see it. It's really funny. Now, if you venture into some of the other things that these people have made, and it's not savory, I did not suggest those, okay? So just keep that in mind. The rabbit hole uh, on YouTube will may lead you to something that's not so Christian of uh, me to share with you. So, um, but let's start today. We're, what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about the fact that we are created. We do. So everybody say, "I'll turn my back. I won't watch." Say, "Amen." If you believe we're created. All right, good. So we almost believe that. It sounds like. Um, we, but it, we were created. Um, Jeremiah chapter one verses four and five. Uh, Jeremiah, um, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So, psychology, or like psychology used to say, that at birth, the human being, the human mind was just a blank slate. Right? There was just nothing there. It was just this empty page being ready to be filled with your experiences. The only problem with that is that it, didn't take, it doesn't take much observation if you go to a nursery and you see babies in there, you see some content, you see some crying, you see, and as they grow, if you've got more than one child, you know that there's quite a bit different going on with one than there is going on with the other one. And I think it's backed up here in Jeremiah, um, for those of us who believe in the Word, when it says, before I formed you in, the, in your mother's womb, I knew you, that God began to design you before all the stuff that happens physically and genetically and biologically happens, happened. Um, so genetics would say this. Genetics is the, science, uh, the scientific study of heredity dealing with resemblances of related organisms. So many big words. Somebody's going to have to explain to me. I'm reading this so you can explain to me, me what it means. <laughs> Resulting from their interaction with their genes and their environment. I, rem- I want us to remember that. So from our parents and from God, we, get, right, we, get, we understand, sort of understand genetics, most of us, right, that we, we uh, uh, inherit like red hair or our temper or our sassy attitude that Haley obviously got for me, um, right? Our, her hair color, like the way we relate to the world and the way we identify with the world. Um, it's also re- with the interaction with their genes and with, their in- with the environment. Now, we know when God created man, he breathed his spirit into the dust of the earth, right, and created man. He breathed his spirit into the earth. So we believe there's more to us than just biological wiring, Correct? Like we're more than just dust. We had the Spirit of God breathed into us, so we became able to think, to reason, right, to love, to make decisions, to hate, unfortunately. Psalm uh, 139, 13 and 14, David uh, sings or prays or whatever it was David was doing in this one. He said, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. So we, if, if you just stop and pause for a second just to think about God's creative power, 
it's it's really mind blowing, isn't it? Well, I talk about this a lot. When you think about how far we are from the sun, and it still warms us from 93 million miles away, and you can't look at it. Um, just the human co- I mean, the DNA, the way we're put together, and the way everything is sustained, and the reason we we keep breathing, and how this all functions, and that we can multiply. I mean, just that whole. I'm not gonna get too detailed with the process, but you know, the the whole. Uh, it just we're just in awe of God's creative power. And the fact that he created you and I alone is mind-blowing. But the idea that he created you and I to help him out. You know, I think, God, have you seen what people have done lately? <laughs> have you seen what a wreck we've made of it? You don't want to start trying something else. But he, as far as I know, he hasn't done that yet. So <clears throat> when you look at people on the surface, we all have a certain way that God designed us. right? God created us in his image, in his likeness. And God knows what he's doing. Everybody would agree with that, right? We're Christians. We believe God's powerful. God's all-knowing. He's pretty smart. He knows what he's doing. Um, We look around, and we see some hiccups and mistakes, and some people are probably looking at me going, I don't know about that. I don't know how God knew exactly what he was doing. Don't don't say that to my face. Um, But anyway, (laughs) but he, he created us all with certain needs and attributes and all that kind of stuff. And they also put us in an environment. When you read through the six days of creation, he spends a long, long, long time creating us an environment to live in, right? And setting all these things up. It's a God that cares about us, right? He thought really in depth about how we would live, how our environment would affect us. So the same is true not only physically but spiritually, See, we have a certain DNA, spiritual DNA that we have. We have everybody in here has got different personalities. <clears throat> and those are affected by the way God designed us and the environment we grew up in. Right? One, one case would be is like, you know, God, may, God wired, may have wired some of us to get angry a little bit more often than others. Right? It's just, it's just the way we're wired. We get passionate. Right? Even, even, even Jesus and God have had anger, had righteous anger. So you can be angry in a very Jesus kind of way. But the learned environment is, is like, so if I get angry, I kick the dog. My kids learn when they get angry, the way you deal with that anger is to kick the dog. Right? So I promise this is all going somewhere. I don't know if your eyes are spinning around as fast as mine are, but I promise we're going somewhere. <clears throat> so we are created by God. Fearfully, we were created wonderfully. He spent a lot of time thinking about you specifically, humankind as a whole, and where we were going to live, and he made it pretty beautiful. He pre- made it pretty amazing. So we're created. I want to I look at four ways, four aspects of, our, uh, of ourselves as a creation. Number one, we're, crea- we cr- we're created, <laughs> and I put an H. Is it up there like that? Okay, no. I put an H on my notes. It's shoal, body and spirit. So I don't know what a shoal is. Uh, I think there's like a shoals, Alabama, or muscle shells or something. But anyway, it's soul. It's a good thing I don't just read directly off the teleprompter. Uh, it's created with, we're created with soul, body, and spirit. Now, this is kind of can be weird and can kind of be confusing. But if we look at the scripture I have prepared for that, if we'll move on there. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole Spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So God made us soul, body, and spirit. He made us in His image. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right? Physical, emotional, spiritual beings. Number two, God created us valuable. Go on there to Luke, Cody. All right. Jesus said, and by the way, if you are obsessive compulsive, I'm so sorry about my PowerPoint. I decided to do it at 4.30 this morning, and the fonts don't match, and it's driving me crazy. So would you all pray for me? Okay. Sorry, Vince. I know you're probably one of them. Uh, we think a lot in, in some, some ways. Anyway, so, so Jesus said, I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do, but I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he is killed, has the power to cast into hell. I say to you, fear him. Right? So, this is indicating and saying, like, after the body dies, after the physical part of the body dies, there's a soul and a spirit that can be cast on somewhere else 
to receive more destruction and devastation. Now, this is the scariest thing Jesus ever said, in my opinion. That and uh, uh, depart from me, I never knew you. I mean, those are, those are bone-chilling scriptures, and they should be. The thought of being separated from God scares every person. I don't care if you're in church or not. I don't care if you believe in God or not. It scares every person because we're designed that way. But listen to what he says. The, the most scary passage in all of Scripture, immediately, all right, that's five, six. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. Anytime you see therefore in the Bible, you've got to ask yourself what? Does anybody know the saying? What is the therefore, therefore? Right? You are of more value than many sparrows. So as soon as God, Jesus says that, he says, don't worry, though. You are extremely, 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 extremely valuable to God. And if you're sitting in here and you're, and you're stressing out about that and you think you've blown it and God's given up on you and you're not important to him anymore, that is a lie that's, that you need silence. You need to let us know so we can pray for you because that is a lie. You are very, very valuable. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body, there it is again, Spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 11 through 13 says it this way. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Right, there's things you know about you that nobody else knows. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God, right? We have this kind of FaceTime. We have this phone connection that's never cut off, like God never hangs up. We have this open line. It goes from our heart to God's heart. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So you got needs, right? Anybody, Anybody have needs? How about oxygen? Can we start there? Do we ever agree with the oxygen one? Um, so we have physical needs. We, we have oxygen, we have food, water, and rest. So the next time somebody gets on you for taking that extra nap, say, hey, it's a need, and God commanded it, right? Go with the God commanded it first. <coughs> we also have emotional needs. Anybody have emotional needs? You like to think about it that way? Men, let's talk about our feelings. Y'all ready? Let's buck up and talk about our feelings. Then we'll talk about the Super Bowl and fishing and hunting and manly stuff. But let's talk about our feelings just for a few minutes. We have emotional needs. And here, here they are. If you disagree, just uh, we'll do this this way. I can't get you to like raise your hands and participate. If you disagree, just yell at me. Okay? I feel pretty safe about this one now. Okay. <clears throat> we have emotional needs. Uh, need number one, we have a need to associate with other people. How many days have you gone through where you haven't spoken a word to another soul or associated with people? The, the people have been a part of your, your life in some way. If, you might have gone a day or two, but not many, not many. So you have an actual need, a spiritual and emotional need that you were designed with and you're built with, just like oxygen, food, water, and rest. For your emotional health, you need to associate with other people. Here's, a, here's the fun one. Men, hey, we can talk about this one, Right? Um, to control and take power. Come on, power, rah, power. We control and take power. It's a need. So when you want to take control of somebody else, you can say, look, you've got to forgive me. This is a need I have, right? I'm just designed this way. Okay, so this sounds a little crazy. Let me back up a little bit. If Dave and I are having a conversation, right, Dave is allowing me to control him right now because I'm talking and he's stopped and he's listening. So that's a little bit of control that Dave allows me to have over him, right? And a lot of you are allowing me that right now. When you come and speak back to me, if I stop and listen, that's just a small version of it. Now, all these needs are on scales, right? Some of us have a huge need for this. Some of us have a very little need, right? And some of us have a huge need one way and not the other and vice versa. So For instance, I may have a huge need to control other people, 
but I don't have so much of a need for it to be done to me. I really pray for that need to be met when we're trying to decide what restaurant to pick after church. It's like, somebody else, just pick. pick. I'll go wherever. You, can, you, have, you have control. Nobody wants control over that. I think that's why they're on a scale of one to nine because that's the 10th one and nobody's ever reached it. <clears throat> and then the last one is to give love and affection and to receive love and affection. <clears throat> Does anybody, anybody disagree with those? You feel those needs? See, our, our hearts are hungry for these needs to be met from God and other people. Do you ever think about that in terms of God? You have a spiritual need from God to associate with Him. Now, this sounds weird, but you have a need also from God to control God and, and to be controlled by God. Now, this is, very, this is really important with our spirituality because if you read through the Scriptures, you'll see God un- designed us, and he understands we have those needs. You ever wonder why some people seem like they could just get away with saying whatever, like Peter, you know? Or what about Gideon? He's like, look, God, if you want me to do this, I'm, I'm going to take this wool, and I'm going to take this fleece, and I'm going to do this, right? And if you, you know the story. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But he gave him all these special instructions, okay? And then God shows up to Gideon one time, and Gideon's like, okay, God, you stay right there under that tree. And the miraculous thing is God was like, all right, <laughs> right? So <laughs> he really, no, he really does. So God, go back and read it if you don't believe me. That's the, that's the paraphrase. But <clears throat> so God, God knows that about us, right? When he answers prayers, when we call out to him, now he only gives us a certain degree of that, right, because he knows what's good for us. But to give love and affection and to receive love and affection. Some of us need a lot more of that from God than others, right? In both ways. So man's spirit apart from God, here, here's the kicker. Man's spirit apart from God is never satisfied. After the fall in the Garden of Eden, right, we have been trying to get back to God ever since. Tower of Babel, massive failure. All right? We've been trying in our own ways, in different ways, physical ways, whatever you want to call it. The cosmonauts got into space and didn't find God and gave up. <coughs> We get emotionally, spiritually, and even physically out of whack when we try to meet these needs in ungodly ways. We've been, we talked about sin for a couple of weeks, and I wanted to start to transfer this and start to talk about relationships and the way we were created. Because we, before we get to Patrick Mead, we're talking about our most intimate relationships, like husband and wife and children. I just want to talk about relationships in general and how we're designed to have those because we got them going on right here. Right? Anytime you go into a new social setting, you start, to do, you start to do the process of elimination. Right? You instantly, whether you know it or not, you start, trying, you start figuring out who you're going to hang out with, who you're going to talk to, and who you're not. Right? That's like level one. Right? I've got a, I don't know how well you all know me, but I, in this setting it's a little bit different. But if you know me away from here, I've got a fortress up, man. It's got machine guns. It's like you, those are very strict, and this is just the way I'm designed. Right? And I have to fight this sometimes, but I have, I have, I have walls up. Like, they're pretty protected. Barbed wire, machine guns, armed guards. You can get through the walls, though. I need your friendship a lot. I need to come up. This is, this is me. This is who I am. And, and some of you will be identified and some not because we're all designed differently. That's level two, right? We let people into, and this is where we're going to stop today. Because we're going to say level, level three is deep affection. It's for your spouse and it's for your kil- uh, children and close friends and family members. But we're going to stop there because that's the, how we mostly function in the church. Right? You guys have let, uh, let the church in, the church leadership and the, this church be in, past level one, I think. Most of us have. Some of us probably still got some walls up with some guns. Right? But, but we're there, and that's, that's how we're going to grow and function. So together, it's our job it's our job, especially as a church leadership and me as a pastor, to help that relationship between you and God, right? to help understand how that fits and how that works for you and how you can serve and how you can find joy in that again and not be burned out again. Um, <clears throat> because the spiritual need we have, we talked about physical need and spiritual needs, the, or uh, emotional needs. The spiritual need we have is to trust God to meet our physical and emotional needs. That's the spiritual need. And that's how we get there, right? We depend on God. We trust God to do things for us physically, 
We trust him to do things for us emotionally. The mo- what is the most outrageous expression of love that God ever gave? It's Jesus. Right? God wanted, desired to give you love and affection so much and to give you control over your own life again so much that Jesus came and died on the cross for us. But not just for that. But look back to what he says to Jeremiah. Right, Jeremiah, he says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That, that part's awesome. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I set you apart. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Do you believe that's true about you too? God designed you to need that and to approach him for that and to use the community for that. So before you were ever born, God set you on a journey to get right here where you are today. Now, there are a lot of variables that could have taken place. I'm not talking about, hey, God just designed everything and decided everything from the beginning. It's all playing out. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is is that, that you are working towards this moment, right? And the next time we get together, you're working towards this. It might not be serving here. Right? Your mission that God's got for you, your purpose in the kingdom that God has for you, this might just be a stepping stone for us. And we talk about it as leadership all the time. It's like we're fine with that. Right? We're, we'd love to be a tool to help you go be a missionary or to go serve in a powerful way at another church. Right? That's, that's awesome. That's what we're here for. But the ultimate expression of love was what Jesus did for us on the cross. And we got to see physically his body die. We, got, we get to read about the, the soul and the spirit, like, returning and forming a new man, right? We die to ourselves daily, like we're all going to have the physical death. But spiritually, we've already had it, hopefully. We've, we've been born again for a purpose and for a reason. Like, anything that you've got set in front of you, God has a plan for and I don't know if I'm talking to you or talking to myself <laughs> because I just left my job of 12 years just to do what God says, hopefully. Now I know I'm going to blow that some, right? It's scary, but this is, this is why. It's for you guys to know that I am gonna be, I'm available for you starting now all the time. You know, I don't know if, um, if you're afraid to get in touch with us or me because you know that we have careers and we have very busy lives. Well, God has chosen me to not be like that anymore, apparently, right? So let me help you. Let the church help you fix that relationship. Let's go. And I need you too. I need you to help help me reconnect with God too. Can we do that as a family? I want to ask you something, and I just want, I want to, because I need it, and I, wanted, I just want to set an example. I want to ask you all to come up and pray for me. You know, it's, it's a hard thing to do. It's a humbling thing to do to ask somebody for help and ask for prayer. I can't make it without you going to God and saying, hey, help him out. Would you do that? You don't have to walk up here. You can hold your hand out or whatever. Would somebody lead that for me because I really need it? And I don't want you to be afraid and come up and say you need it. So if anybody else that needs it this morning, you make sure we know. Father God, we lift up Justin right now. We know that it's a scary time for him. We know that uh, it seems like you you don't have a plan, but you do, God. You've got a plan for him and his life. And we thank you so much from the bottom of the heart from, from revival. From this family that gathers around, from every hand that touches another person in front of you, God, we just thank you so much for Justin. Amen. And Lord, we just ask that he continue to be the man that you want him to be. Uh, break those walls of fear down. And Lord, we just ask that the church itself uh, opens up even more to uh, Justin because he's asked us to. And we thank you, God, for doing all that you do in each and every one of our lives, God. And mostly, God, we just ask that you continue to bless him and his family as he moves forward to your Amen. Thank you, church.